Dudley and many of the others in the Canterbury um, universe were, became sort of the house band at, at Fox Hollow. So could you fill us in a little bit about Fox Hollow for people who don't know about that? We moved to uh, Albany in 1965, and then somehow we went to the, 19, the, the second Fox Hollow Festival, 67 and we didn't know anything about it. And I was playing banjo and guitar at the time. And uh, uh, we, we saw all this thing there, and we went the next year, and that's where I saw Howie Mitchell uh, from DC area play the hammer dulcimer. And the PA is ringing like crazy. You hear it? Um, anyway, uh, I'll move closer. Uh, I heard Howie Mitchell play the hammer dulcimer, and of course I heard we went to the dances and heard Dudley and, and Bob and the Canterbury Orchestra play, and we fell in love with this kind of music. And we had es established at that point in, in the Albany area a group called the Pickin' and Singin' Gathering, which still goes on today, um, which is just a group of people who originally it was the Floatin' and Pickin' and Singin' Gathering. We went to different people's houses and just swapped songs. <coughs> and uh, at that time, and the beers were part of that, yeah. Uh, Bob and Evelyn came to all those. And we uh, uh, then uh, uh, we started a, a string band workshop as part of the Picking and Singing Gathering. And that was Tom McCreesh and myself and John Peterson and Joan Pelton and Joe Williams and Lynn Williams and Marie Brait. It was a whole batch of us started playing, learning to play tunes. And out of that came Joan and Tom and uh, John and I as Fennig's All-Star String Band. No, well, originally, yeah, that's the final band was the four of us. Pelton? Uh, yep, Joan Pelton. <coughs> and we recorded that uh, blue record, The Hammer Dulcimer, and uh, we, we premiered it at the Fox Hollow Festival in 1973. And uh, uh, as I, said, I was saying a little bit ago, we've sold over 100,000 of those in various forms over the years, which in Canada, that's a gold record. So, <laughs> yeah, well, I started the Hammer Dulcimer hearing Howie Mitchell play it at Fox Hollow, and uh, he brought it up in a rainy night, which was often at Fox Hollow, to the Pickin' and Singin' Gathering craft booth and set it on the counter there, and I messed around with it, and I said, oh, I gotta make one of these. So I went home, and I made one, which is still out in the barn, and to make a good cheese slicer. Uh, <laughs> Um, but it wasn't a terribly good instrument. And I remember playing it for, for him the next year, and he says, well, it needs some work. So I built his number 16, I believe it is, his square dance dulcimer, which is the one I still play. His had six strings per course, which was a nightmare. But um, I, I made a, about 23 of those, and then a friend in Texas is making them still. And um, when Tom McCreesh moved on to the Hot Mud family out in Ohio, George joined the band in 1970. Five, and Toby had joined playing piano in 74. So as George and I say, we've been playing together since we both had full heads of brown hair. And uh, although I don't think I ever had a full head of brown hair. Um, so we actually, I mean, I didn't realize Ralph started calling, you said 76 was when you sort of started uh, discovering calling and playing contras and whatever. Contras, but, yeah. Yeah, contras. And, um, but at that time we needed a caller. Well, we, we called, we, uh, Jerry Jenkins was our caller. Yep. And uh, we'd go to the White Creek dances and play up there and play at the Albany dance. And there was no contra dancing in Albany at that time. And we started it with Jerry calling. And then Jerry became flakier and flakier. That's, that's a compliment to Jerry. <laughs> and uh, it was hard to get. And so Andy started learning to call. And she called with us for three years. And we played all over the place. We played in New York and Boston and up in, uh, uh, I don't know where the heck we all played. She has it all written down, I'm sure, right? She's got a big book full of stuff. <laughs> anyway, um, so we were the only game in town for a long time. And uh, uh, we, we, our dances would be anywhere from 80 to 150 people, um, all, all, I mean, regularly. Uh, we're the only game in town. And we played at Fox Hollow, and we actually, you're talking about, about uh, uh, the Newport Festival. Um, one year, uh, Sandy and Caroline Payton of Folk Legacy Records went on vacation with their kids. They took a big western trip camping, and they needed somebody to go to festivals and peddle Folk Legacy Records. 
And so we said, okay, we can do that. So we peddled folk legacy records, and we were there in 1969 when the men landed on the moon. And we had a VW bus with a 12 a inch black and white TV plugged into the cigarette lighter. And I was up on top of the van with an umbrella over it all, and we had about 200 people around the van watching the land on the moon while the Everly Brothers were, were singing down on stage. <laughs> yep. Good work. That's true. 